Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. There have been some recent updates to the Mio Mini and Mio Mini Plus that are pretty impressive. For example, we now have a port of the Drastic emulator working on this device. That means you'll be able to play Nintendo DS games on here. In addition, there's also a working version of the native Pico 8 app. This means on the Mio Mini Plus, you'll be able to browse and download Pico 8 games directly onto the device. And finally, to top it off, there's been a new stable release of Onion OS. And there are some pretty neat features, including updates to certain emulators. But then also there are some network related updates to the Mio Mini Plus. And so far, my two favorites have been an update to their net player multiplayer function, and then now we also have the ability to scrape box art directly onto the device. Anyway, in this video, we're just going to kind of go through all those new updates and show you how to get them set up for yourself. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, to start for all of this, you're gonna to wanna to be running the latest version of Onion OS on your Mio Mini or Mio Mini Plus. Now I'm gonna assume you already have an older version of Onion OS on your device, but if you've never installed it before, I would recommend checking out the Onion OS website. And I'll have this link down below, but if you go into their documentation section, there's gonna be a full written guide to show you how to install this operating system onto your device. In addition, on my own website, I have a Mio Mini guide if you'd like to use that as well. This one will also show you how to set up Onion OS for the first time time, and then a couple other features that I find really important as well. Either way, I'll have all the stuff linked down below in case you need it. Now, I'm using an older version of Onion OS on this Mio Mini Plus, but because it's network capable, we're going to do the update directly onto the device. So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. Number one, make sure you go into the settings and turn on Wi-Fi and make sure it's connected to your local home network. And I'm just going to assume you know how to do that without showing off my own credentials. And depending on the version of your operating system, you should see a little Wi-Fi icon in the top right once you you're connected. After that, let's go into the app section and then we're going to go into the package manager. And this is the place that allow you to turn on or off certain emulators or apps. We're going to press the R1 button to go to the second tab. And here we want to make sure that the easy net play options are enabled if that shows up within your apps list. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. You can do it after you update. Other than that, make sure that you go down to the onion OTA update and turn that one on as well. After that, we're done. So let's go ahead and press start twice and it'll boot us back into the app menu. Now let's scroll down the app list until we find the Onion OTA update. And then we'll press the A button to start it up. From there, it'll make sure that you're connected to the internet. And then it'll give you an option to choose between the stable or beta release clients for Onion OS. And for our example, we're going to use the stable one. After you press the A button, it'll check what version you're running versus what's available now. And as you can see here, there's an update to 4.2.3 as of today. So we're going to press the A button to continue, and then it's going to ask you, do you really want to download this update? And you're going to click on the one that says, yeah, man, I want to do it. And from there, it's going to download the update files. It's pretty big. I think something like 400 megabytes. So go ahead and just leave your Mio Mini running and then go and grab a drink. After a few minutes, it'll say, okay, we've downloaded it, but are you ready to apply that update? And of course, you know what to do at this point. This one will also take a couple minutes as well. So if you've already grabbed a drink, then I think now's a great time to grab a snack. And once it's all said and done, it'll say that the update is completed and press the A button to reboot. Now, when the device restarts, it will take a few minutes to go through the update process. And while it's happening, they actually have some really handy graphics that'll kind of talk a little bit about Onion OS and what it can do. Now, if you'd like, you can go into the Onion OS website. They have a blog section. And within here, they always make a nice post anytime there's a large release. So if you'd like to read more about some of the updates in Onion OS version 4.2, this is going to be a really nice handy list, and it has a bunch of other guides and links to it if you want to read more. So really, a lot of these features I'm not going to be able to cover in this video because it would be like an hour long, but all the information that you need is going to be found in this blog post. Anyway, this is what Onion OS version 4.2.3 looks like right now. And it's very similar to the previous process. You'll go into the game section, pick your console, then pick your game. However, there are some great updates under the hood. Let's start by talking about how you can now scrape box art directly on the device if you have a Wi-Fi capable device. And to do this, you want to hover over a game and then press the Y button. This will bring up what they call the game list options or glow menu. And there's quite a bit of things you can do here, including changing out your emulator for that game. And this is also where we can go to check out Netplay, which we'll do here shortly. But the biggest thing for me is this new scraper tool here at the bottom. And this is what allows us to add box art to our game. So to get to it, we just press the A button and we'll have a few options here. But before we start scraping it, I want to configure everything to make sure that we're getting exactly what we want. 
out. So here in the configuration menu, you've got quite a few options, and every time you pick on one, it'll actually tell you what it's all about. Either way, for the first one, it's going to ask you which media type you want to scrape for your game. I personally like to use box art, but you have a whole variety of options here if you'd like. Along with box art, you can also pick the region. So for example, if you want the Japanese box art, you can pick that. But of course, I'm in the United States, so I'm going to pick the one that says America. Anyway, after that, you can also choose which source you want to use for scraping. And we have three different options right now. We have Screen Scraper, Launch Box, and RetroArch. I personally like to use Screen Scraper, so I'm going to use that one. Also, there's an option here to scrape all your game files in the background while you're actually playing. However, this will cause some slowdown when you're playing a game, so it might not be worth it. For me personally, I'm just going to leave it as is so we can see what it's like when you're actually scraping. Anyway, once we have that set up, we're going to go back to that main scraper menu. And now we're going to pick to scrape all of our Nintendo games. Now, the thing about Screen Scraper is that it does require a username and password. And you can get this from their website, which is ScreenScraper.fr. And the first time you try to add box art using Screen Scraper, it's going to ask for those account credentials. So within here, you can press Select. And then you can press X to bring up a virtual keyboard. Now you can type in your username and then press enter to also add your password. And then once you press enter again, it's going to immediately start that scraping process. Now this will also take a few minutes. What it's going to do is go through the database and check each of these games. And if there's a match, it's going to scrape the box art. So depending on how many games you have, this might take quite some time. And I would also recommend plugging in your device to charge it up at the same time. And the way this works is that after it's gone through Screen Scraper and found all the box art, it will then go through the other two options to see if there's any missing titles that the other databases found. And then finally, once everything's done, it'll boot you back to that main menu page for whatever system you were scraping. And here we are. I now have all of the box art for my Nintendo games. It's pretty awesome. And like I mentioned, you can scrape other media. So if you'd rather see a screenshot or a title screen, you can set all that up within those settings. And of course, starting up a game is going to be the exact same process as it always was. So you'll press the A button and the game will start right up. And because my Mio Mini has already been connected to the Wi-Fi, I've set up my retro achievements as well, I am good to go. And of course, once you're done, you can press that center menu button and that will take you back to their Game Switcher app. Next, I want to talk briefly about multiplayer. Just because it's so simple to actually set it up, I think it's really worth your time, especially if you have two of these devices. But also bear in mind, you need to be running the same version of Onion OS using the same core and the exact same ROM file as well. Anyway, I have this all set up between these two devices already, and so let's go ahead and get them connected. To start, we're going to go back into that Glow menu by pressing the Y button, and then we're going to go down to that Netplay section and press A. And for one of your devices, you have to host a session. So we'll start that with the white Neo Mini Plus. And it's going to ask, do you want standard Netplay or easy Netplay? Standard Netplay means you'll be playing over a Wi-Fi or internet connection, but easy Netplay means they will just connect to each other and not the internet at all. So that's going to be ideal if you're using it in a car or out camping or in an airplane and so on. Either way, let's go ahead and choose Easy Netplay just to show how simple this all is. After a moment, the game will actually start on the host device. And now on the other device, we can connect to it. So we'll go into the Glow menu again. And now under the Netplay settings, we're going to select Join a Session. And then, of course, same thing, we're going to pick Easy Netplay again. And from there, it's going to try to find the hotspot that's been created with the white device. And then they're going to sync up. It'll take maybe 20, 30 seconds altogether. But you'll know that everything's working once the two devices are synced up on the same screen. And that's it. They are now set up where player one is going to be the host device and player two will be the one that joined it. And obviously you want to choose games that are going to support two players playing at once. Now, the way that Netplay works is essentially you will see the exact same screen on both devices and then each device will control its own character. So the way I describe it is that you're looking at the same television like you did back in the day, but instead each player now has their own little mini television to look at. And the connection here is really stable, as you can see. When I press the jump button on either of the two players, you can see that there's basically no lag between the two. So this is an excellent solution if you have two Mio Mini Plus devices and you want to play multiplayer games with somebody else. But bear in mind, this will only work with like the really retro system. So PlayStation 1 is not going to work. But things like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and arcade games, they're all going to play just great. One thing of note, you can't just press the menu button to exit out of a game. Instead, you have to quit it via RetroArch. To bring that up, you're going to press the menu and select button at once. And then once you're in the RetroArch quick menu, press the B button to get into the main menu. And then scroll down to the bottom till you find quit RetroArch. Of note, if player 1 disconnects while the game is running, it's not going to remove player 2 from the game. Instead, player 2 will take over as player 1 if you want to resume the game that way. But depending on the game, that may not actually work because player 2 is still going to be there. Either way, that's basically it when it comes to easy netplay. It is a very simple setup. 
And one thing I noticed while testing this is that on player two, it'll actually scrape the box art as well. I'm not sure what's going on here, whether or not it got it from the Netplay session or it was just a byproduct of easy Netplay, but it's kind of neat that I got that without having to actually scrape the box art myself. Anyway, if you want to learn more about how to use Netplay on the Mio Mini Plus, I've actually already made an entire video about it. In fact, in that video, I show you how to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color Pokemon games against one another as well. So if you do want to learn more, I'll leave that linked in the description below. Now, one other recent update to the Onion OS operating system is how it works with Scum VM games. You may not be familiar with this platform, but essentially this is how you can play some old school point and click PC games. Now, this is kind of a niche system, but all the same, I did want to show really quickly how to set this up because it is now very easy in Onion OS. Essentially, all you have to do is go into the Scum VM ROMs folder and then go ahead and put all of your PC game files within a folder and that's it. So here I've already moved over five games that are compatible with Scum VM, and now we're ready to play them. There is no other work that needs to be done on the user end. Now you might be wondering what games are going to work with Scum VM and what files are needed. And Scum VM has an entire wiki page about this. It'll list out every single game that works with it. And then if you click on the game, it'll also have a listing of all the files that are required for the game to run. And I assume that if you're already a fan of Scum VM, you kind of know about this already. But either way, I'll have this linked in the written guide as well. Now, once you've enabled Scum VM and you've added your ROM files, you should now see it within the game menu. And when you click on it, it's going to give you an option to import your games. Once you click on that, it's going to ask you what kind of name you want to show in the menu. For me personally, I like to use the database name, but I like to remove any sort of parentheses. So I choose the second option here. It'll take a minute to scan everything, but once it's done, it'll let you know, and you'll now see all of your games. I'm getting a couple duplicates in here, but it's probably because of the files that I have within my folders. But either way, you can see that all of my games are now available within the game menu. And of course, to boot it up, all you have to do is press the A button and it'll start right up. Now, in addition to simplifying the import process with Scum VM, according to the developers, they've also made it much more performant. That means that if you've tried it before and it wasn't working very well, it might work a lot better now. Either way, I didn't want to spend a lot of time talking about Scum VM, but I did want to show that it is working better now than it was before. And I think this is a great solution if you want to play like some of the old LucasArts or Monkey Island games. And also some of those really old school point and click adventures like King's Quest, these all are going to work on here as well. And I remember trying to play some of these games back in the day and man, they were so hard. It's like the developers were super creative about trying to find various ways that you could die. Another point and click adventure game that works really well on the Mio Mini Plus is Myst. Do you remember this one? I remember the graphics looking so good back in the day, and honestly, they still look pretty good right here. So if you want to revisit those old school PC games, then I would definitely recommend checking this out. And of note, to bring up the Scum VM menu, you just need to press the start button and you can see this right here. This is where you can save and load your game, but then also quit out of the game once you're done. Okay, those are some of the major updates available with Onion OS version 4.2. But now I want to show a couple other features that are planned for version 4.3, but you can actually try them out right now. The first one we're going to tackle is playing Nintendo DS games on the Mii U Mini. And there's a working port of the Drastic Emulator available on GitHub. I'll have it linked down below. Essentially, all you want to do is go to this website and then download the most recent version. Right now it's version 1.6, but I bet there will probably be future updates as well. And this should work with both the Mii U Mini and the Mii U Mini Plus. Anyway, once we have the file downloaded, we can put the emulator on our Miu Mini SD card. And to do this, you're going to need to have 7-Zip installed on your computer, which you can find free online. Either way, once you're ready, go ahead and open up the Drastic 7-Zip file, and within there you'll find a Drastic folder. Next, on the SD card, you should see a folder called Emu, E-M-U. Open that up, and then drag and drop the Drastic folder into this folder on your SD card. And that's all you really have to do when it comes to setting up the emulator. But now we want to add our games. As you can see on the left, I have a bunch of Nintendo DS games that I want to try out on this device. So on the micro SD card side, we're going to open up our ROMs folder. And now we need to create a new folder and we're going to name it NDS all caps. And from there, all we have to do is just drag and drop our NDS files over into that NDS folder. And the file sizes for Nintendo DS games can get rather large, so this might take a while depending on the amount of games that you have. Anyway, once that's done, we can eject our SD card and put it back into our device. Now, when we start it up and go into the games folder, you will now see a drastic option. And here you can see all our Nintendo DS games. I've also gone ahead and scraped all the box art, which worked like a charm as well. And the first time we start a game, we're going to see a listing of all the drastic hotkeys. And the big thing to note is that most of these hotkeys will require you to press the select button as well as whatever else you're seeing on the screen. And I'll go over a few of these here in a moment. 
But for now, we'll press the A button to actually start up a game. And initially, this is how it's going to look. You can actually see both screens at once, and it also has this border on the bottom and right side to kind of even everything out. If you want to swap which screen is bigger, you can press the R2 button. And also, if you want to change out this border, you can press the Select and Y button to toggle through your options. Now, for me personally, I prefer to have a full screen, so I press Select and A to bring that up. And now I can press the R2 button on the back to swap between these two. And so this is the mode that I generally use when I'm playing. Now, additionally, you can press the center menu button and this will bring up the full drastic options. And there's a whole variety of options within here if you want to get further into it. A couple other hotkeys worth noting, if you press select and R2, it's going to do a quick save. And if you press select and L2, it'll do a quick load. In addition, if you press select and R1, it'll toggle on fast forward. And finally, the other key worth noting, if you press the L2 button, it'll swap between D-pad and cursor mode. This will bring up an on-screen pencil that you can move around and then press the A button to make it a touch function. And of course, to go back to D-pad mode, you would just press L2 again. Now, in terms of performance, I was actually pretty impressed with Nintendo DS on this device. You have to remember that the Miu Mini was never designed to play the system in the first place. So there's been a lot of wizardry happening from the developers to get this up and running. And for most games, you probably won't feel any sort of slowdown. It actually is a pretty smooth process. But one thing to bear in mind that many games will use frame skip in order to keep it at a full speed. So while yes, these games will run pretty fast, there's a bit of choppiness depending on the game that you're playing. For example, with Mario Kart DS, I could definitely feel that it wasn't running at a full 60 frames per second. And so in that regard, I would recommend playing more lightweight games, you know, something like Phoenix Wright, where it's not requiring a lot of performance power. And thankfully, there are a ton of lightweight games available for the Nintendo DS, including a bunch of platformers and puzzle games. And then also bear in mind, of course, that we only have one screen to work with. And so in that regard, you may be better suited playing games that work the best with only seeing one screen at a time, and the games that don't really require touchscreen inputs either. So there are some limitations of trying to play Nintendo DS games on a single screen device that doesn't have touch input, but all the same, it's pretty awesome to see this additional console working on the Miu Mini and Miu Mini Plus. And to top it off, the Onion OS team has been working with a developer that ported this over, and so they expect to implement this officially in their version 4.3 release. Speaking of which, there's another system that they've been working on as well. And that is, they now have the native version of Pico 8 working on the Mio Mini and Mio Mini Plus. And if you want to read more, the Onion OS development team has just recently made a post about it on Reddit. And of course, I'll leave this link down below, but we're going to go through the process in this video as well. Now to start, in order to play the native version of Pico 8, you need to have the native Pico 8 files. And this does have a one-time fee of $15. However, bear in mind that once you buy the license one time, you can use it forever on any sort of platform. So this will work on PC and Mac and other handhelds as well. And of course, it'll give you access to thousands of games, so I think it is well worth it. Anyway, back on the Reddit post, they have an app available for download. So we're going to go ahead and grab that and download that to our computer. And then, of course, you also need to download the native version of Pico 8, but the Raspberry Pi version. And so once you've downloaded those two files, this is what they're going to look like here on the left. And we'll start by adding the Pico 8 app to our Onion OS SD card. To start, we want to go into the app folder, and then we'll want to open up the top Pico 8 file with 7-zip. Inside here, you'll find a tar file. Go ahead and double click on this one. And then after that, you will find a folder named Pico. And all we have to do here is grab this Pico folder and drag it into the app folder on your SD card. Next, we want to add the data files from the native Pico 8 app. So on our SD card, we're going to open up that Pico 8 folder that we just added. Within here, we'll find a subfolder named bin. Open that up. And now we can open up our Pico 8 Raspberry Pi zip file. And after opening the Pico 8 subfolder, we want to move two specific files over, the one that ends in dat and the other one that ends in dyn. So grab these two files and then move them over into that bin folder on our SD card. And that's it, we are now good to go. We've installed Pico 8 on our Miu Mini. After we put the SD card back into our device, we can go into the app section. And now near the bottom, you should see an option for Pico 8. And now if your device is connected to the internet, it's going to open up an app called Splore. And this essentially is a web browser that's made for Pico 8. Within here, we can cycle through different options. And then if we pick something like, say, the Featured section, we press the A button. It's going to download a list of games from the internet and then show them here. And the Featured list is one of my favorites because it has a curated list of really good Pico 8 games. Now you can browse through here and then press the A button and the game will start right up. And the great thing about Pico 8 is that all these games are really small and lightweight, 
which makes them very easy to jump into and just try them out. And this is what makes the native Pico 8 experience so magical. This is the only system available on the Mio Mini Plus where you can browse through a games list and then download those games directly onto your device over the internet. And there are a ton of hidden gems within here. I encourage you to go through that featured list and just try a bunch out. You've got everything from top-down shoot-em-ups to other recreations of previously popular games. For example, this one here is called Buns, Bunny Survivor, and it's basically vampire survivors, but with a bunny who shoots carrots. And again, I just found this game randomly on the Splore menu, and it is a lot of fun. So I would definitely recommend not letting that $15 license fee stop you from playing Native Pico 8, because it is a ton of fun. Anyway, on that note, that's really about it for this video. I wanted to show you some of the new features we have with the Mio Mini Plus, and some of those new features we can find within Onion OS version 4.2. Now, version 4.3 is just around the corner, I expect it to come out maybe the next month or so, so I'll try to do a quick update when that one comes along as well. As it stands, I really love these Onion OS updates because it just keeps making the Mio Mini Plus a better and better device every single time. So that's really all I have for now, but be on the lookout for an update video sometime in the future as well. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. What update in this version do you like the best? And what Nintendo DS or Pico 8 games do you recommend others try out as well? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.